morning. Romy Stevens with ABC Hunter News. Several fundraisers and donation points have been set up around Abermain after last week's fire destroyed five homes and a business. Three fires merged to form the blaze on Thursday that burned more than 840 hectares and is now under control. Thousands of dollars have already been raised, including in a donation fund organised by Cessnock Council and Rotary, as well as drop-off donation points. Cessnock resident Quinton King has organised a fundraiser for Brian Teasdale, who lost his tyre business. In the past, Brian's helped underprivileged guys or guys that had a bit of trouble in their lives to give them a job and help them get back on their feet. So I thought it's a good opportunity for our community to back them for a change and show them a bit of support. The New South Wales Rural Fire Service says tomorrow's forecast weather conditions are likely to put a strain on resources. Temperatures are expected to reach close to 40 degrees in parts of the Hunter. Ben Shepherd from the RFS says there are more than 60 fires burning across the state, but conditions are expected to ease ahead of Christmas. For the first time, it does look like by next weekend, we could see moderate fire danger right across New South Wales. It could give firefighters the break they finally deserve going into Christmas. Hunter Surf Lifesaving is urging beachgoers to be safe as an influx of visitors descends on the Port Stephens area for the summer holidays. The plea comes after a 47-year-old Sydney man died on Saturday night after getting caught in a rip south of Barubi Surf Club in Anna Bay. Hunter Duty Officer Glenn Dunkley says there have been 31 rescues and three drownings in the area over the past two months. We are getting high levels of visitation to the area. We have the new walk from Barubi round to Tomaree Headland here in Port Stephens, which is an amazing walk, but it's certainly encouraging a lot of people to the area and people that want to seek adventure. Australia's peak motoring body is calling for the release of road crash data as Australia records its highest death toll in five years. 1,253 Australians died on the roads in the 12 months to the end of November this year. Eight people have died on New South Wales roads since Friday alone, including a 26-year-old man who died in a motorcycle crash in Maitland on Saturday morning. The Australian Automobile Association's Michael Bradley says while crash data is collected by the Victorian Victorian government, all states need to share their information. Australian voters think politicians use road funding to win electorates and elections, not to save lives. Australian voters want transparency and accountability and they want politicians to spend their taxes on road projects that keep people safe and keep the road toll down. Environmental groups have thrown their support behind a multi-million dollar battery storage system at Tomago. Kelly Johnson reports. Energy company AGL is behind the proposed Tomigo battery energy storage system. If approved, it will have a storage capacity of up to 2,000 megawatts per hour. 20 out of 23 submissions were against the proposal. The Hunter Environment Lobby is among those who support it. The group says the battery system is a better option than a gas-fired power station approved for the same site. Eco Network Port Stevens also supports the project, but it wants to see steps taken to reduce environmental impact. Those against the proposal cited concerns with the use of lithium batteries and the potential impacts on prime agricultural land. To sport, a second-half blitz has seen Newcastle come away with a 4-2 win against Western United in the Women's A-League. A goal from Lauren Allen saw the Jets lead 1-0 at half-time, but Western United scored through a penalty early in the second half. Both sides then went goal for goal until the Jets had kicked away. Matilda's star Emily Van Egmont scored a goal in what was her last game as part of a guest stint with the club. In the men's A-League, Newcastle coach Rob Stanton says his side showed character over the weekend but should have claimed the win. The Jets were trailing 2-1 in the dying minutes of the game against Perth Glory but stole a last-minute goal to level the score at 2-0. Stanton says it felt similar to the round one game against Perth. We showed the same character, but the difference, I think, was this game we probably should have got three points today. I think we shot ourselves in the foot. I think that's going to be something that might happen still a little bit till we learn some lessons as a young group, and I have to wear that and try and make sure we limit that by developing the players better. Checking the Hunters' weather, partly cloudy. Light winds becoming northeast to southeasterly in the late afternoon. Daytime temperatures in the low to high 30s, reaching a top of 38 degrees in Scone, Singleton 36, 32 in Maitland and 27 in Newcastle. That's ABC News.